Well, I guess I'll do the last one. On today's theme is the Corpus Christi Social Security on Port Street administers free checks for the purchase of the drug methamphetamine, also known as ice. I'm telling you, they do it. I was going to post, I think tomorrow I'll do the next Acts. Uh, I began the Acts study, Book of Acts. But either way, I usually post a teaching on Tuesday and Thursday. <coughs> so we had some rain. Let me just, uh, I'm going to do our regular teaching videos in the wild as well. Let me tell you some about this. Corpus Christi. I can't get too personal. I had a friend who has a lot of money. And I don't, I feel a little bad because sometimes he'll have upwards of four to five thousand dollars with hundred dollar bills on him. All of that is a disability check. Uh, but Recently, he had some again. And of course, other people know that, and he will lend people. He's a good friend of mine. But you know, he has told me, he said, John, if, if they want to give me free money, I guess I'll take it. Which he does. That's a disability check for many years. 50 years, 40 years. But they told him, the Social Security here at Port Street told him, make sure your balance in your bank account never goes above maybe 1800 They said, you got to hide that money. Or do, you can't keep it in your account. And he, at times, he... So anyway, so, and it always made me think, this place is bad. I have a friend that owns about a, I would estimate the properties maybe 250000 300000 all on a disability check. There are rules if you, people that have never worked in their lives, you have a limit of, for instance, you can't own a certain amount of stuff because you never worked. And I always wondered, how my friend has this property worth, and that, that might be low-balling it, it might be worth upwards to half a million, okay? Trust me. All on disability. And I could never figure that out. Because you're not supposed to, if you didn't work and you're on disability, then you have those criteria. I worked, I had so many credits. But during the whole process of the things I went through, there were times they indicated uh, you can't be married yet. It's a scam, okay? This place is a scam here. Why would they tell some of these guys, make sure you hide it? What benefit are they getting, John, out of that? The lawyers here that work in these cases, the reason they take these cases is because the process is like two or three years, and they get a cut of that money. And so once the deal is done, they get a certain approval. Okay, they get their money. And of course, if their client's check got stopped, it would, something would look bad. So for that system to function, they got to make sure these guys keep getting those checks with the knowledge of make sure your account does not go up. I also had a friend of mine that was getting a ton of money. And he had said, John, I didn't want that. They sent him like an $18,000 back pay check, then an 8000 He said, I was working, John, I didn't need those. Had to do with because he did prison time and all. And then they had a later but he'll testify he didn't need it, he didn't want it. He said, why are they sending me? So please understand me. When, when you see me thinking there's something wrong here, there certainly is. 
I would say, not just in my case, but when I saw some of the stuff they're doing. So it's to the benefit of the people that are connected. The local people that represent these types of people, they're friends with the people that... And so, if your friend, who happened to have been a lawyer, is making whatever, you know, 30000 on this one, 15000 70000 on this one, okay, they're all friends of each other. It's to their financial benefit, whether they give a direct kickback to the person that approved the thing at the poor office, I don't know. But they all know each other. Oh, I'll take you out tonight. I'll buy you that nice thing. Corruption is corruption, all right? Corruption is corruption. I also feel like the money that they've used from people that have worked, paid tons of money into that system, like myself, and yet they say, well, because you did work and you had that type of a career and therefore you're uh, in a different criteria. Which criteria? So we'll end it on that one. But that that's the truth, what I just told you. And so when I seen that kind of stuff, like they told these guys to hide some of their money, the Social Security told them that. And I used to think, well, why, if they realized that these guys maybe accidentally built up 50000 they they said, no, you got to keep it down to a certain number. So make sure you cash it out. Now, you tell pe you're telling people with lifetime drug dependencies, this place here, this Social Security has advised these people that. And you tell people that. Make sure you spend it. Or get you're contributing to the rampant ice problem, methamphetamine problem, particularly Flower Bluff. They did the documentary on the little suburb I live in called Flower Bluff like the meth capital of the U.S. They did a documentary on it. I had not seen it, but that's been out. So this will be the last one on that. And it'll give you some insight into the system. It's a nationwide problem that we have. But you don't have the oversight this far south that you should have. You don't have the oversight this far south of the United States that a normal community would have. When I did that little brief one this morning, talked about our local talk uh, radio guy, Bob Jones and all, there's reasons that people are leaving this region. There's reasons that people are leaving this region. I saw a couple of things in the news. I didn't check it just now. But it's some people that are concerned, family members, that these are homicides that took place that have not been solved. And I would just hope that they're not solved simply because there's not leads or whatever, but I don't know. I don't know if there's other reasons these things are not solved, okay? Because of corruption, because of what a lot of my friends told me. One just the other day, mentioned to me. He said, they do what they want to do, John. He said, they do what they want to do. And he's talking about people in authority this far south. And I, I know some of them because they did a lot of prison time. And I told him, I said, you know, I never knew that, brother. He was particularly telling me how, oh, a lot of stuff. But I said, you know, so-and-so told me how they even are holding these guys in Texas prisons, like 10 years after their release date. I said, you know, so-and-so told me that. I said, I didn't, he said, John, they do it. And then people would ask these guys later, what do you mean they do it? They just do it. <laughs> Imagine if you're in prison, you, it's time to release date. Oh, I, I'm out today. What do you mean you're out today? You're in Texas, boy. <laughs> the judge here, the judge at Call the Times called out, you're in Redneck Court. You're in South Texas. Well, we got you. You shouldn't be giving that checks to these guys and telling them to hide them. You're in South Texas. You understand? 
you pass the marginal line of regular civilization in the northern part of it, and then you get a little far south for San Antonio, and then there's no law. There's no law. If you got local lawyers telling people, make sure you tell me you can't work to the other, and hide the money. Okay? It's lawless down this place.